Hi artists and friends! Have you ever wanted to grow your very own vegetable garden, but you haven't had the seed, soil, or space? Well, today we're going to use the magic of art and our very own imaginations to create a vegetable garden. We're going to draw something called a cross-section of a garden. A cross-section is a picture of the inside of something. Like you have laser vision and you can see through to the inside. Our drawing is going to let us see underneath the soil or dirt in our garden, as well as the sky above it. All you'll need today is a piece of paper, a pencil, and something to color with. Markers, crayons, colored pencils, paint, whatever you have. Let's get started. First, put your paper the horizontal way, not vertical up and down. We want our picture horizontal so we can fit a lot of vegetables. Once your paper is correct, take your finger and find the side middle of the paper. Once you found it, mark the spot with a dot. Now do the same thing on the other side. Next, we're going to take our pencil and travel or walk the pencil with a wiggly line from one dot all the way to the other. This is going to be the top of our dirt or soil, so we want it to be bumpy like the dirt is. We're going to draw the sky above the dirt line and the growing vegetables and dirt and bugs below the line. Let's start by planting our vegetables. Along the dirt line, plant four seeds by drawing four dots on the line. Make sure each one of your seeds has lots of space on either side of it so that it can grow to be a big, delicious vegetable. After you have four seeds for your four vegetables, each seed needs a sprout, a bunch of green leaves popping out of the ground. The leaves are very important to have because leaves are what soak up the sun and turn it into food so that our vegetable plant can grow. You can draw lots of different types of leaves for each vegetable. Here are some examples. Now that our plants have leaves to make themselves some sun food, let's add our delicious vegetables growing underneath the soil. Now you may know already that some vegetables that we eat grow above the ground like peppers and beans. Let's not draw those vegetables underground since they don't grow underground. Today, we're going to pick four root vegetables. These are vegetables that do all their growing underground, and when they're ripe and ready, we pull them out from the ground to eat. Here are some root vegetables you could draw under each sprout. Beets, carrots, potatoes, onions, garlic, radishes, and yams. Those are some of the best root vegetables. Once you have picked your favorite four root vegetables, draw the growing veggie under each leaf sprout. I tried to use shapes that kind of look like the different veggies I chose. Beet, carrot, potato, and radish. Now, each vegetable plant definitely needs to have some wiggly roots that grow deep into the soil. The roots are what the plant uses to suck up water from the soil when it rains, so it's very important. Use some wiggly lines growing off of each vegetable for the roots. Lastly, let's add some lines on each vegetable to add texture. Texture is how something feels. A lot of root vegetables feel bumpy and rough when you touch them, so we will use lines to create this texture in our drawing. Now it's time to decide what else you want to bury in your dirt and soil. A wriggly worm? A creeping centipede? A buried treasure chest? Make sure to add something really special down there in the soil. 
I added a worm and a centipede because these bugs help to bring air into the soil for the vegetables to stay comfy and healthy. Next, we need to draw some details in the sky. You could add a sun, clouds, a butterfly, an airplane, a rainy sky, a rainbow, whatever makes you happy, you can add into your sky. If you have a black crayon or marker, I think it looks really nice if you outline or trace your whole drawing. It almost makes it into a coloring page just for you. Now it's time for the really fun part, coloring. Try to use the perfect color for each of your vegetables. Orange for carrots, red for beets, stuff like that. And don't forget to color the leaves green. Oh, and work really hard to cover all of the dirt and soil with brown. When you get to coloring the sky, a lot of young artists like you will draw a blue stripe across the top of their paper and leave a big blank space between the sky and the ground. Even though this makes sense in our heads because the sky is above the land, when we look at the sky in real life, it looks like the blue fills up everything all the way down to the ground. So when you color your sky, make sure to fill it in all the way down to the dirt, not just the top. Wow, that was so much fun drawing our imaginary gardens today. I can't wait to see yours.